just uh, give you some brief summary here. Our Project Maroon, that's our bioscience project. That project is still in progress. No change there. We're exactly where we need to be for that project. We do have a new project to, to report, Project Color. That's a food production project. It's a uh, Midwest U.S. based company that's looking for an expansion into the Southeast U.S. market. Uh, for their food production operations, so we entered a comprehensive RFI for that. Uh, that could represent about a $20 million capital investment in the creation of about 30 to 40 new jobs with salary and wages 10% above the regional average. So we're excited about the opportunity to compete for that project. You can see our existing industry report there. We still continue on each of these visits to look for expansion opportunities and job growth and also to identify any issues that uh, we might help the companies deal with. And we continue to find those expansion opportunities and work those for our existing industry. Um, on the next page, we'll just briefly mention Express Scripts. That project, as you know, is in progress. We're in the second cohort of training uh, for this session. Uh, which will run, which is running from about May through December, and we'll get about 175 new customer service representatives hired and trained for Express Scripts through that process. Project Treadway, which uh, is fossil tire and service, which Megan mentioned, you know that project has been announced. Please drive by Westside Business Park. You'll see site development underway now. Uh, we're moving dirt, stake, and there is construction underway on that eight acres. That will be a nice addition to that park. Uh, project Loaf is our logistics distribution the project we've been working for the last uh, about six or seven months. That's in progress. In fact, Mr. Cup Mr. Gupton and I had a conference call this morning uh, with the prospects to do some final due diligence on, uh, on the economic development uh, agreement that is going forward to them for final review uh, and signature. We would expect to see some construction on that project and to be able to do an announcement here in about three weeks. So that's moving nicely. Project Coal, that's our uh, food production processing project uh, with a local industry that's looking to expand. Still doing preliminary engineering and due diligence on an existing building to make sure we can move forward with that expansion uh, as we're looking to. Project White Cadillac, another food logistics distribution project. We continue to work with uh, the prospect, providing them additional information uh, that they're looking for to do the final determination for the type of building that they want to build. Uh, we did some work with them a couple of weeks ago about uh, the differences between textured concrete block and steel wall and tilt wall concrete buildings. So, uh, so that one is still in progress. And finally, Project Patient. That's our customer patient service center expansion. Uh, that is on course, on track. Uh, they are looking for a relocation around the 24th of this month. And at, at that relocation time, we'll be able to make an announcement. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, they are already training folks for the expansion of their operation. They needed some uh, parking facilities to do that. We were able to go to VSU and ask for the use of some of the issues parking spaces so they could bring their new hires in for training. The issue stepped up and gave us 15 parking spaces that we could use for that training. So I want to acknowledge that and thank the issue for that. Uh, those are our uh, expansion existing industry projects that are underway now. Just a couple of things uh, to mention about the Community Business and Industry Partnership. That's the Global Agribusiness Opportunity Symposium that Megan mentioned. Uh, this session that we're uh, really hosting to help uh, bring about is on Wednesday, October the 8th. Uh, that's going to be in Tifton. What we've done is we've reached out to our local food production industries and we've reached out in our JDA, our Joint uh, Development uh, Region uh, across our counties and we're doing a direct mailing and email to let those folks understand what the opportunities are for them. And there are some good opportunities for them to that. So we'll, that will be our community business and partnership event for the, uh, for the fall. Uh, you can see the industrial park acreage there. It has remained unchanged. We'll update it uh, as we get projects underway uh, and make some announcements there. 
And then finally, uh, Mr. Call, if um, your permission, I'll give the building committee update here. Uh, we're in the final punch list phase now, and I mean final punch list, things like replacing broken globes in our restrooms so that were, were broken in shipment, so those have been replaced. We're in the final uh, inspection and reports period now, things like where we do the balance test on the HVAC that has been completed. And so we're looking to be in a position to do the final contingency payment to, for, the, for the project uh, probably by the end of this month. So we're, we're just about where we expect it to be. <coughs> Madam Chairman, that concludes my report, unless you have some questions. I have a question for you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I know Express Scripts, you know, didn't have a tremendous capital investment here. Because yeah. they, they had, you know, re the representatives are based out of their own home. But how many jobs have they created now, in, you know, since day one? Yeah, so the first, se the first session that we did with them last year, uh, they created 135 jobs. And those are jobs that are work at home, customer service representatives, once they are hired and pass the, uh, the training process, then they are provided the equipment to do that work from home. Their starting salary is $10 an hour, and there's a full benefits package that goes with that from Express Scripts. We're in the second now cohort of training, which began in May. They'll hire an additional 175 out of that, and we're already now beginning to talk about some additional training that we would do here. So uh, it, it's moved it's very well. This is a great market for them because of the issue, progress towards the tech, uh, because of Moody, uh, they're really able to find uh, the folks that they feel have value for their business. I would like to add also, um, the great point is, you know, this wasn't one of our traditional cohorts, so we projects that we were because we didn't see the huge capital investment side to it, but it was still a competitive project. Mm -hmm. So throughout the process, we competed, competed with five different locations. So, um, you know, we still had all of our project meetings here. We had um, our employment agencies, Department of Labor, and Moody, and then meet with several of our community partners to um, eliminate or choose or select a community to bring these jobs to. So. You know, a lot of people didn't have a lot of capital investment, but it was still a competitive project as it relates to other communities. And, and we learned through that process because we made a very conscious decision to go after that project as we would any other project if it were to bring a huge capital investment. And when you look at the potential of the jobs that it's bringing in our community, I think it's paid dividends. Well, I'd like to also commend going back to the building committee report, commend the staff. I, for any move, this move went so smoothly. I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of headaches that the board doesn't know about and a lot of festouches that the board doesn't know about, but it sure looks like it went pretty smoothly from our standpoint. So we just hope you guys are happy with your new dig. And, but we do commend how, how smoothly it all appears to have gone. And on budget, on time, all that good stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. My turn. Yes. What was the static that we walked in on? <laughs> <laughs>